Welcome back to Let's Play Darkest Dungeon. I'm your host, Time Pants, and today I bet you are thinking I'm going to say I'm excited. I am not. I am not excited. I am filled with woe and dread and all those other sad emotions. I am not loving this. So we do have three, four, gosh, I think four bosses, yeah, that we still have to take down at novice level. And time is getting on, so we definitely want to want to yeah hurry up and, and do that we've got to fight my least favorite boss fight like by a wide margin and who's that you ask none other than the brigand pounder the eight pounder of course the least of all the pounders if the pounds were ounces it would be a half pounder but this fight is a chore simple folk are by their nature loquacious and the denizens of the hamlet were no exception. It was not long before rumors of my morbid genius and secretive excavations began to fuel local legend. In the face of my increasingly egregious flaunting of public taboos, awe turned to ire, and demonstrations were held in the town square. Okay, now, the I know you're... of sulfur and gunpowder hangs in the air. I know you're supposed to think that these public, like, flaunting or flouting of public taboos is like, you know, performing experiments on the dead, summoning creatures from beyond the, the mortal veil, but, I mean, is it? You know, we find out a lot about the ancestor's secrets, but not a lot about his private life. Hmm. I will return with Cuthbert's banner and Bolgan's crossbow so as to honor them with a proper burial. I will leave what is left of, th of thrice-damned Mizir and his trinkets to the swine folk. Perhaps they will build him the memorial he rightly deserves. Yeesh, man, that's cool. But yeah, like, do you think the ancestors' taboos are, like, just not showering? I mean, he seems like the kind of guy who sort of sequesters himself away for long periods of time, you know, locks himself in his room. The parallels between, you know, between the ancestors' reclusive behavior and, you know, your garden variety nerd, I'm not going to say are obvious, but they're super clear in a way that most people would immediately understand, if you take my meaning. So, I am torn. Shit. <laughs> that was well-timed. Uh, I am torn as to how I would feel about getting rabies, and that actually just kind of makes me think that, honestly, getting rabies in the game is also something that I am amb ambivalent about. The, I mean, the damage output would be amazing, especially against a boss as tanky and boring and terrible and awful. God damn, speaking of awful, point L. Like, get your head in the game, man. It's, yeah, this is, this is a boss run. I, I need you to actually pull your weight. But, by the same token, as, as nice it would, as it would be to have that damage and just be able to reel off just a you know, a big crit or something like that that knocks off a huge amount of the pounder's hit points. As amazing as that would be, losing, what would it be, 10 accuracy? Perfect. That is precisely why we... Where's my map? Um, I was told there would be a map. Not seeing much cartography here. Okay, I guess this is the sort of map that doesn't tell you where you are, where you're going, any sort of topographical landmarks, lay of the land, general, general outline. All right, cool. Fuck me, I guess. Yeah, losing 10 accuracy would suck balls if it meant letting 
the matchman potentially survive. I mean, we absolutely pos God damn it. We absolutely positively cannot afford to let the matchman touch off the cannon. I mean, I know that there is a possibility and in fact an increased possibility at our level of the matchman striking of all things a match touching off the cannon and click you know a dud and we escape unharmed sure that's possible that is not an outcome that i feel comfortable betting on i do like this we'll buff up we should have one round of tox toxin trickery once we kick the door in and go into the next room so we could potentially see immediate benefit from that we're gonna scrap the lore i'm sorry like i appreciate i appreciate what red hook's idea was there and ah there we are immediate value from toxin trickery wonderful like i i appreciate that they really tried to get people uh, excited and fired up about playing the darkest dungeon and by doing that letting them you know contribute to the story but uh you know i, I don't I'm not, not going to make a, a habit of collecting it. Alright. I was hoping that plus dodge from the toxin trickery might mean a little bit more than it ended up meaning, but... Oh well. Honestly, this is still going just fine. And getting... Yeah, getting this fountain is, is pretty well timed. I think... This is, yeah, I think this is pretty much, and that may have been a little bit greedy, but I just want to see. Uh, this may be an optimal time to, yeah, get our occultist stress managed, and yeah, why did I do that? I'm going to, I'm going to be healing him. I'm going to be healing him with the fountain. I should have healed like literally anybody else. Holy shit. Okay. I'm not not an intelligent person. God damn. Okay. Well, our scouting was just on a, a bit of a time delay. It's one of those time release maps. It is a map suppository. And at this point, we, we do have a, a fairly good idea where we're going. But would you look at that? Okay. Now, yeah, now our party is... I was actually thinking of camping right there but our party is actually hardy enough to that wasn't funny is is actually hardy enough to manage one maybe two more encounters although i'm thinking given the the particular dimensions of this encounter maybe one is probably enough but then again maybe not holy shit that is yeah that's a, a nice start now Obviously, stunning, yeah, stunning our mushroom man would have, would have been kind of cute. Because, I mean, he gets pushed back and has to use, like, stumbling scratch. Okay, well, now we're gonna see if, uh, if getting rabies is really as nasty as they say. But, ah, yeah, see... That, yeah, that was the, the risk of not stunning the fungal scratcher as soon as possible. But actually, we kind of get the best of both worlds. With the one turret dead there, there's no chance of it using its, its multi-target light attack. So we don't have to worry about it shuffling the scratcher back into position. And honestly, yeah, this is handled. I, I thought... I thought maybe there was a there was a play there to heal, but nah. Okay, uh, that was a little bit greedy. I wanted to see if getting the map a second time screwed us the way that it did the first time around, but I guess we'll never know because I am never ever checking one of those tents again. Even even a good outcome sucks balls. Like that's that is truly. Appalling. That said, 
with the exception of taking 46 stress in a single hmm yeah in a, in a single action there still we're in pretty good shape I mean this is gonna be an opportunity to get some of the stress managed and the one thing that I'm worried about yeah we could cure the rabies do we want to Okay, now I, I actually am certain that the 8-pounder is not double wide, nor are any of the larger dimensioned pounders. So this kind of narrows down how we really would want to consider buffing the party. I think we get a lot of value from our man-at-arms. Obviously some plus scouting would be great. But, I mean, the question is, how deep do you roll? Okay. Yeah, I like this. Okay, so tactics, weapons practice, dark strength, drop that on, well, drop that on who? Maybe the grave robber? Like, she probably, yeah, I, I want to say, like, she probably could use it. And again, we did not get ambushed. Uh, yeah, she probably could use it, but the man at arms is. I mean, he's not a crit machine, and I hate relying on crits, but in the darkness, the grave robber might be critty enough that over a long enough fight, a fight that lasts between seven and eight thousand years, like the bringing that eight pounder we might just need the higher average damage that we get from from buffing the weapon master <laughs> the, or weapon master man at arms this isn't D&D good grief so I am a little bit concerned here because we could potentially lose our buffs before the end of this Fight, or not before the end of this fight, but before we find the Brigand pound, Pounder, and that would be just catastrophic. That would be... That would be horrendous. And honestly, it's probably more likely than even I thought at first. And looking at it, I almost certainly should have delayed camping at least one more hallway. So... Yeah, I mean, you can see how this goes wrong. It really just needs to be an encounter here, and then two more, and we're we're out. Um, fortunately, we did not. Yeah, you know, we didn't run into that. But yeah, I mean, we could have been ambushed in the night, and I obviously didn't safeguard against that. So we kind of got away with something there, and I probably. Stupidly, I probably could have held off on. Yeah, I probably could have held off on on actually popping that until after the boss fight. That was a bit of a mistake. But at this point, like, yeah, we can drop a couple of the less essential consumables, and here we go. Ugh! All right, everybody, settle in. Make sure and bring a blanket, pillow, because this one's gonna... This, I'm, all, I'm already starting to get a little bit drowsy just thinking about this fight. So, I... I don't think... I don't think there's any special preparation that we need to consider. Like, yeah, probably pick to the face is, is a better overall utility play. Although... No, I, I, I think it's very clearly a, a better utility play here. So, no question. First thing, what's got to go is the matchman. Um, how do you hit him, though? Like, Abyssal Artillery is good, but you know, it still leads, leaves us in kind of a precarious position. Like, gosh, what do you do? I mean, I, I want to minimize as many attackers as we can in round one. 
and I felt pretty safe doing that. I think at this point, yeah, we can anticipate getting a kill here off of the repost or off of the uh, whatever that attack is. And great, good first round, absolutely no progress on the pounder whatsoever. And yeah, here come reinforcements. And unfortunately, they clear corpses every round. On top of that, we also have lots of perfect. We also have, have lots of fun crowd control that we need to do. And I don't know. That was close. Like lunge may have been the better option there, but I hate losing the occultists. Yeah, I hate losing the occultist single target attack. Like look at that, four damage. That is like seven percent of the brigand pounder's total HP. That that sucks. Yeah, like at this point, I think, yeah, we take take the hit. Just expect that we are going to, yeah, missile artillery get one kill. Obviously, I would have liked the damage values swapped there, but okay, great, good use of a crit. Don't don't feel like you have to crit the the eight pounder. That's not necessary. We'll just we'll just do this the slow way. That's all right. We're not in any kind of hurry here. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is definitely an opportunity to make some headway. So perfect. A little bit of stress relief, and yeah, this guy goes down in a single thrown dagger. That's how we want to. Yeah, I think that's how we want to proceed. I don't think we got any extra value out of pick to the face, and potentially probably a lot less. So, okay, that was actually progress. I, I had forgotten how that felt. I have honestly forgotten since this fight started a lot of things. Hope. Emotions. Like, feel. I don't feel anything right now. I. Am I dead? Like, is this my body? Is this. Like,. No mortal person with a finite amount of time on this earth would spend, like, willingly spend their time grinding a boss down over now six rounds and not even halfway to the finish? No, this is not the behavior of, of any, any sort of sane, rational person on, on this or any mortal coil. And great, oh good, more um, more enemies. That's that's fun. It's definitely a, a thing that that happens from time to time when you're in this this fight with the eight pounder. There's definitely going to be some enemies. I'm just going to have enemy fights. Yeah, I'll just um, oh good, we got a kill there. So now we can get a single single swing on the eight pounder. Four damage, that was good, 20%. It's remaining damage, meaning that more than likely we'll have it taken down in four more rounds. That's just wonderful, it's brilliant. I can't, I can't imagine anything more thrilling or exciting. It fills you with more hope or joy or optimism than just uh, continuing this fight, you know? Just, uh, yeah, seven damn. Look at that. Almost double digits. Not quite there, obviously. Or ever, but yeah, you know, seven damage is it's more than we've been doing the entire the entire boss fight. So there's that. I remember when uh, this fight first started. I was a young man, and uh, I thought, you know, there's and just take this this world by storm, you know. Oh my god, a crit of 14 damage when it had, what, three health left? Oh, yeah, we, we live in a universe with a sick, perverted sense of humor. I am shaking with anger right now. 
You know, I, I said I missed feelings. Well, there they are. They are back. I am I am experiencing a lot of those right now. They are all really happening. Oh, you fuck. Like, why? You could have... I, any other round would have been perfect for that crit. That, that would have, like, saved us... At what time is it? What? 2019? Like, how... How much faster would that boss fight have gone if we had gotten a 17 damage crit in, like, round three? Just... Fuck you. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, so... Anyway, this... This run is mercifully nearing its, its conclusion. Uh... I mean, I, that took the wind right out of my sails. I mean, there... There are some times where this run is, is or this game is, has had its fun at my expense, and I have always been a, a, if not a willing participant, at the very least I like to think of myself as a good sport. That was beyond the pale. I am, there is no, there is no forgiveness. There is no excuse. God damn it. And of course we toss the uh, the shovel away. Yeah, the, the hits just keep coming. You know what? I'm out. <laughs> There's only so much so much indignity I can take, and I think I cleared that threshold about like six months ago when the run was half half through. Holy shit. Alright, so at least we do have the boss kill. Eldritch hater, good good quirk, but hmm. yeah, you you really fucked with me that time. That's... You're sick. Alright, so I am not thrilled about getting a very rare trinket for a character class that I don't anticipate using and don't think is even really that good in the first place. So we'll just uh, try and set the table here and come back with a boss fight. I'll see you next time.